Hey Blender Bob here, I completely redid my motion path add-on. Before it was a toy, now it's a tool. So here we can decide if we want to use the full timeline or if we want to set up the start frame and end frame. The step will show you markers at every X frames. I will show you later. So we can create motion path for objects, vertices and bones. You don't have to do them one by one. You can select many objects and just click on objects. It's going to do it for both and it's going to assign a render color to the path can change the radius of the dots, so depending on the size of your scene. And then we have a bunch of very cool options. Well, you can change the color, so you just click on the color box and you change the path to whatever color you want. The next one is the eye button, so you can turn it on or off. The next one is the refresh button, and I wish I didn't have to use this button, but I don't have a choice. I would have to go in the Blender core to fix this, and this is not something I can do. So you need to click on the refresh button to update. But you can also update all the path with one button. Oh, I told you about the steps before, so let me show you. I will change it to 5 and I will refresh the path. And now you will see that I get dots every 5 keyframes. I will just refresh it. Well, it's kind of small, you don't see it, so let me just change the radius. Okay, so now you can really tell. All right, the next button is to actually turn on or off these little spheres. The motion paths are locked, so you cannot select them, you cannot modify them, you cannot do anything. But there's a little lock button here, if you unlock it, then they just become lines and spheres. So you can modify them if you want, delete them, you know, you can do whatever you want. And you can lock it back. The next one is the ghost button. And when you do this, it's going to copy the path that you have there as a reference. So if you modify the animation and you refresh it, then you will still have a copy of the previous path. So this way it's easier to evaluate the changes you have done from one path to another. And you just click on the ghost to take it away. And then you have an X button to delete the path. Or use the delete all button. You can also do this for vertices, which is not something you can do in Blender. So you select the vertices, you click on the vertex button, and you get your path. Okay, that's a little bit too big. Let me reduce it. And if I move the geometry and click on the update all path, well, of course, all the path will be updated. And finally, we have the pose button. Well, you know the drill. So I will just select two bones and I will click on the bone button and it will create the motion path. If you create a motion path using Blender's built-in tool on a bone, you will not be able to see it in object mode, but mine will be visible in any mode. Also in Blender, you cannot create motion path on more than one object at a time. And finally, I added a warning in case you select too many points and you click on vertices. It's like, whoa, 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 are you sure you want to do this? No, I don't. It's available in the Blender extension, so you can get it for free. Just go get it. Okay, bye.